Hello and welcome once again everyone. Today's video features the Tier 7 Pan-European or Swedish destroyer Skone. I've included the full ship build including upgrades and captain skills after the main review and highlights with the timestamp here on screen for your convenience. I'm making the assumption you have already played the Tier 5 Visby and Tier 6 Vesteros, and not free XP'd your way through these tiers. The game style and tactics change quite a bit when it comes to playing Skone for a large number of reasons. Tier 7 matchmaking can be quite challenging these days, due to the increased threats of the large number of carriers at Tier 8 and increased frequency of Tier 9 matchmaking, with the very powerful stealthy destroyers and radar cruisers that brings. It's a simple fact of life that tier 7 is a very hard tier to play at the moment. So how does one go about playing the destroyer role in this very dangerous environment? Step 1 is all about dialing back your level of aggression at the start of games in relation to contesting capture points. It's far more important to spot the enemy fleet's positions Sit just a little deeper and play the torpedo boat role. Straight away you should notice the torpedo range, it's the outermost circle around you on the minimap. Utilising this great torpedo range and fast reload time will become an integral part of your tactics. Not only to stay out of radar range, but still reach out and be able to strike targets. When playing solo and being teamed up with random players, you should always assume the responsibility to provide that spotting that your support cruisers and battleships need. You should never underestimate the power of keeping your opponent spotted for your team. Any cruiser or BB player worth his salt will recognise what you are doing and will provide you support, if not simply for the reason it's in his own best interest to do so. Among the great advantages of having these long range, very fast torpedoes is the ability not only to torpedo approaching targets, but also on corridors of retreat. The ability of narrow spreads allow you to focus on specific areas, similar to the ability of single torping, like the Royal Navy DDs, so make use of it whenever possible. Normally, torping any target that is retreating is a wasted exercise, as most destroyers neither have the range nor the torpedo speed. But Skone has both. Even the threat of these torpedoes approaching can lock targets on course, preventing them from manoeuvring, making them a much easier target for any teammates that happen to be shooting them. So don't be afraid to use them. They are never wasted. With a sub 1 minute reload time, you virtually have them on demand all the time. Not like other nations where you have to be very conscious of when and where to use them. Both torpedo launchers are already back up, so it's another two spreads away on the enemy North Carolina. I intentionally delayed my entry into this capture point until the enemy cruisers were no longer a threat. There was an enemy destroyer here which took the cap initially, so now I'm ready to engage him if he hasn't already fallen back. The absence however of enemy torpedoes would suggest he is already retreated and if so, that North Carolina is badly overextended and very vulnerable. Normally I would feel a little reluctant chasing a target like this into a corner, but I am the one spotting the North Carolina. If I chose to fall back and approach B, there is a chance the NC gets undetected and may escape. Right now we have a small ship lead and a capture point advantage, so the time lost in dealing with this one target is worthwhile in removing him. Skone has a slower base speed of 35 knots compared to its tier 6 predecessor, Vesteros, which could reach 38 knots, so you should take this into consideration when evaluating targets and your own positioning. It's very easy to slip into the false rhythm from previous tiers of easily relocating across the battlefield. It should be also noted that Skone has an increased turning circle and slower rudder shift time compared to the Vesteros, 
of 610 meters and 3.2 seconds, respectively. So don't be surprised if Scone A feels a little clunky and unresponsive at first. I've stopped firing for the moment as my priority target indicator has shown that something else is targeting me intermittently, and that's a sure fire sign I'm under threat. It could be the Nelson, but I suspect it's something else. I just want to drop detection, and as soon as the words leave my mouth, I get hammered from over 13 kilometers away by that hipper. I've lost almost half my HP in one salvo from a tier 8 cruiser, even one as notoriously unreliable as the hipper, and a perfect illustration of how carefully one has to play the scone when up tiered. I've turned my stern towards the hipper to minimize my profile towards him and can resume shelling the North Carolina whose guns are turned the wrong direction to be able to return fire. Before I was rudely interrupted by that hipper, I was covering the decreased maneuverability compared to Vesteros. This is compensated however by not only having better torpedoes but vastly superior main armament. Despite having less turrets with a 2x2 layout, the reload speed is vastly superior at 2.9 seconds, which equates to well over a 50% increase in gun DPM compared to Vesteros. Throw in a little more range at 10.1 kilometers and faster rotating turrets, and you'll quickly realize how good these guns can be. It should be noted, however, the shell speed is slightly slower than Vesteros, so a little adjustment in aiming is required, despite having the exact same gun caliber. The shell ballistics are only 50 meters per second slower than Vesteros, but you will notice immediately, so being aware starting off will allow you to make that adjustment early on, before you start thinking that the guns feel off somehow. The North Carolina has got himself into a terrible fix. He's stuck hugging the border, he's unable to maneuver. It's just a question of burning him down. North Carolina goes down. I've already started turning my ship. I'm just going to fast forward here until we get into the capture point. As you can see, both sides have taken some casualties. All the action has been taking place at the A capture point. I'm just going to push into this capture point. The hipper that was shooting me earlier is spotted. He is engaging our battleship. He has fired his gun, so I know his guns are turned. I'm just going to push in and use some AP on his broadside. Actually, his rear turrets are still turning away. Aiming for that middle section into his superstructure and upper belt. Get some nice AP volleys. Take out that enemy hipper. The Uster Jutland appears. He's got bigger issues. He's being run down by the Roma. I open fire. And I've been derelict in watching the mini map here. The Akatsuki has smoked up in front of me. And I'm going to have to make an emergency turn here. And this is something I've had issues with early on in games with the Scone. After being used to the very snappy turning circle and rudder shift of the Vesteros, I have been caught out in certain situations. I have managed to angle now towards that destroyer. Scone's AP is effective on DD's broadsides. There are the torps as predicted. Akatsuki is pushing out of the smoke. Once again, in comparison to the Vesteros, having those two rear turrets at the rear does make quite a difference in the gameplay style. While kiting, you can only bring one of those turrets to bear. Akatsuki does go down. Ustriotland is falling back. Aroma has been taken out. Just going to slow my speed here and take this capture point while dropping detection. Azuma and Bismarck approaching. They do have our Bismarck outgunned. Despite getting caught in a 2v1 situation versus those destroyers, the value of support can never be underestimated. 
Having the battleships on my right and the St. Louis on my left ensured the destroyers were heavily distracted. The Oostergutland, seeing the odds, was more interested in fleeing than fighting, and I can't stress enough the importance of watching your minimap at all times. It only takes a second for a destroyer captain to get badly caught out and boom, your HP is gone. Even though I've played thousands of games and destroyers, it can still be my Achilles heel at times. To be caught out, too focused on a particular target, and taking one's eye off the bigger picture. Making that conscious decision to check your minimap regularly can so often be the difference between a successful engagement or a nasty forced return to port. We have this game now well under control. I'm actually taking some secondary hits there that were aimed at our Bismarck. So I'm going to look and see if I can score some additional torpedo hits here on maybe the Azuma or Bismarck. Bismarck is retreating, makes the Azuma the more viable target. He is showing flat broadside. My torpedoes will be up in just just over 10 seconds. You gotta love those targets sailing in straight lines. Move into a parallel position. I am detected. That means the destroyer is close to me. I'm immediately going to drop torps and angle away from the Azuma as his guns are the greatest threat. The Ooster Jutland, it does outspot me. The Skun A has a detection range of 6.2 kilometers, so you will be outspotted by the majority of enemy destroyers. I'm going to have to force my way back to the center of the map. Get my front turret turned. Scanny has got his guns firing now. I do presume he has torpedoed. Sure enough, there's one set. Get a couple of torps on the Azuma. Pick up the Confederate achievement. Got the enemy destroyer in the perfect situation now. Kiting away. He can only bring one gun to bear. And we gun down a tier 9 destroyer, which always feels very good. Just over 100,000 damage, Confederate achievement, but a very healthy almost 3,000 base XP. Before going to the complete ship build, I've added some links, including the Help Me Discord and my own personal Discord in the description below. Now on to the build. Starting off with the consumables. Wargaming have announced that in the not too distant future, non-premium consumables will be removed and premium charges will become free of charge. But until then, I will keep recommending using premium charges, which will not only decrease the cooldown times of your damage control, but will add extra charges of engine boost and repair party. Skone gets four ship upgrade slots. Starting off with Main Armaments Mod 1, Damage Control Mod 1, Torpedo Tubes Modification 1, and finally Propulsion Mod 1. Moving on to the Captain skills, starting with Preventive Maintenance, Last Stand, Survivability Expert, and then Concealment Expert for your first 10 points when training up a new Captain. The remaining 9 points I've gone for a very strong build with Priority Target, Adrenaline Rush, Basic Firing Training and Superintendent for the complete 19 point captain. So let's take a look at what this build means for the ship's final stats. For survivability, Skone gets 15,450 hit points, which is further enhanced by having four repair parties. Main artillery consists of two X2 120mm guns one in the front and one in the rear, with 10.1 kilometers in range and a very fast reload speed of just 2.9 seconds. Skone gets two X3 torpedo launchers, both centrally mounted for use on either side, with a whopping 12 kilometers in range, a torpedo speed of 80 knots and a reload time of 59 seconds. Skone 
gets an EA defense rating of 52, with a strong max range defense of 6 kilometers. For maneuverability, Scania gets a max best speed of 35 knots, a turning circle of 610 meters, and a rudder shift time of 3.2 seconds. Finally, Scania has a concealment rating of 95, meaning you will be surface detected at 6.2 kilometers and by aircraft at 2.9 kilometers. I'd like to thank you once again all for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more. Take a moment to check out some of my most recent videos and leave a comment below. And until the next time, keep sailing it like you stole it.